Well, the front yard is dead. So why did I do it? First and foremost was quality of cut. The smoothness, levelness of the front was never ideal. When I originally redid the front yard, I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I really, really, really didn't know what I was doing. Let's look at the quality of cut. This was from a couple weeks ago. I was doing my little cul-de-sac curves thing. And if I didn't have the time to do like just double fats, going through and just did singles it really really showed up a lot hopefully you can see it here just a mismatch in the height of cut yes I went and checked to make sure my rear rollers level all of that reel to bed knife all of that was good so it was just the lawn I knew it was the lawn as well simply because there were certain patterns I could do where it would look good and then there were certain patterns I couldn't do and never really tried. I tried them once and I'm like, yeah, I can't really do that. The main problem with that though is I'm repeating the same pattern. Granted, I got some really awesome stripes, you know, after three or four mows, they're really just ingrained in. It's that ingraining in though that's causing the issue. That's why I wanted to get the groomer back on so I could groom it to deal with the grain. However, there's some issues with the groomer that I just want to take it off. The, I really love the low height of cup, but a max of 0.45 inches doesn't give me any leeway and there's no way I can just kind of quickly go, oh, let's bump it up some outside of buying another mower, which the wife probably wouldn't like. Okay, the second issue was dealing with my utilities. Over there, the water meter, it was sunken down. It wasn't even level, it was kind of on a slope. I went ahead and fixed that. I'm gonna show you all in a later video how I did it. It was really simple. It took about an hour and a half and it's looking pretty good now. I got the first round of topsoil slash compost slash manure slash sand to fill in and raise everything up. We're getting ready to get some rain maybe and help compact things down before I run over it with a roller or maybe a plate compactor if I can get my hands on one. The utility issues with that water cover, not being able to mow over it without just puckering up and praying that you don't destroy the reel, that had to be dealt with. And this brings us now to reason number three of why I did what I did. And that's because my house faces to the northeast, the front of the house. You can see the shadow right now, it's around four o'clock and it's already encroaching into the lawn. We still got a good deal of summer left. However, as we get further into the year and likewise earlier into the year, that shadow is gonna be cast a whole lot further out into the lawn. Back in like May and April, by one o'clock it was where it is now. And so it's just gonna get worse. With the decision to renovate, if you all watched previous lawn update videos, when I was in the side piece, I hinted at, depending on how things turn out there, I may do something crazy. And I decided to go ahead and do that. Side piece is holding up really, really well. Not so much right now because I've been so busy with this and other things, I haven't really watered it at all, but that's okay because a lot of it's getting sprayed out with some tenacity to kill some clover along with some other stuff before I start the seeding. I'm not gonna concentrate on killing off all the rye because yeah, let's just kind of leave it as it is because remember, it's just a side piece. So how did I go about killing this? Well, that time lapse at the beginning was taken at 7 a.m. one morning and I ended it around six. Pretty cool. 
how did I do it so fast? I sprayed it the day before. Well, I used a mix of this stuff here, along with some triclopyr, which I don't have the bottle for anymore because I used the rest of it. I also spiked in a ton of ammonium sulfate to help speed things up. That also adjusted the pH enough for me to use the O2YS natural adjunctive. That got things cooking and cooking fast. How fast? Well, the yard was brown in a day. Neighbors left for work and it was green. They came home and it was brown. They had no clue what was going on. Why that combination though of herbicides? Well, first, you know, is everyone's favorite tried and true Roundup that has glyphosate and it also has a little bit of diquat in it. The diquat's simply there for an instant gratification because we live in a just in time, I want it now society. And that's there to just appease the normal consumer to say, hey, yes, this product's working because glyphosate, you know, it takes like 10 to 14 days to actually see anything. This gives it kind of an initial burn down and a little brown up or yeah, whatever that means. Next up, I had that spectricide weed stop, you know, that's designed for like rocky areas, mulch beds, things like that. Explicitly states do not use it on the lawn. Well, there's reasons for that. One is it also contains diquat, so it kills things pretty quickly. It also has fluazifop. You know, Bermuda's not really fond of that guy there. And it also has a little bit of dicamba in it. The main ingredient I was looking for was the fluazifop. You may be wondering why I didn't get something where the main ingredient is fluazifop, like, you know, over the top, or I think it's fulisade. That might be a fungicide, but I know it begins with an F. Well, it simply comes down to cost. The percentage of over the top I needed was going to be, you know, it was like 65 bucks. Lowe's had those guys on special 32 ounce concentrates on clearance for $3.99, so I picked up a whole bunch of those because I can use them out behind the fence and elsewhere as well. One thing is do not get the uh, black bottle that's the extended control that has some other stuff in it that's really going to ruin your day if you try growing new grass. So don't get that one. So for the triclop here, I just had some leftover brush killer and I used the rest of that and I threw it away. It was just some of the bear or bio advanced by bear, whatever, you know, concentrate stuff you get at any big box store. I added that in there. I also had my non-ionic surfactant. And then this comes to the O2YS. I really don't know how to use it. I know you have to adjust the pH, preferably with citric acid. However, I was adding ammonium sulfate and I added probably around uh, three pounds of my granular chunks to do the front yard. And I mixed everything up with my four gallon backpack sprayer and went to town. Now this combo did a really, really good job. It killed it fast as you all saw from the time lapse. And frankly, not a lot of Bermuda's coming back. So there'll be one more application probably in the next three or four days to just give it the final once off. And then I'll also do another round of Roundup by itself the day before I seed. I will be using Tenacity as well at the time of seeding. So that should help me out with that. So speaking of seed, what am I using? Oh, I just went to Home Depot and got some contractor grade mix. No, just kidding. I got some good, good stuff. Now, I wanted to try out something fun that's Roundup resistant and made by a company that begins with S, but they wouldn't let me have any or buy any or anything at all. They were just kind of like, ha, ah, look at that guy. So I went with something better. I went with this. <laughs> That's right. I have the uh, Berenberg HGT True Blue Kentucky Bluegrass Hybrid. Some people say it's a little limey like a Brit, but I don't know. We'll see what the color is like. I'm used to limey colors with Bermuda, so that's okay. But to supplement that, I also went with the Berenberg RPR. That stands for Regenerative 
perennial ryegrass or regenerating perennial ryegrass. This sucker freaking is like Bermuda and KBG. It pops out little determinate stolons and it just, it, it spreads everywhere, supposedly. We'll see how it all does though. The front, yes, it's facing northeast, so that plays into an advantage. I can get away with it. I'll probably have some fungus issues next year just due to the heat and humidity, as you can see. I'm not doing anything. I'm talking to a box and I'm sweating like crazy. So we'll have to look at that and that's actually gonna be really good for, you know, learning. That's a, another reason why I'm doing this is I wanna learn. I'm on a continual path to learning and this is just another way for me to uh, satisfy that. Here's where we stand today. I've started my work. Gonna have some in-depth good stuff back there on the utilities. This area here, driveway side yard is a special surprise that once that's ready, I'll show you or I'm, I'm still waiting on things. Then we're gonna get into everything else and follow along. I got a lot of cleanup to do. I'm gonna show you how I'm sifting the dirt because I'm sourcing all of this dirt from my leftover crap dirt that I got from the rock yard in Knoxville that was full of rocks and clumps and clods. I made a sifter. I'll show you what I used for that. It's ingenious. And we're gonna see what this does. I don't really have success in my warm season turf and I had less success in cool season turf, hence me switching to a warm season turf. So this should be a pretty enjoyable ride for you to learn something, to not do what I do, or just to laugh at me. Anyway, there it is and we're gonna see you soon. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe and Ding the bell if you want to. We'll see you.